Thanks very much, Per. Very, thanks for the introduction. Uh, and, uh, uh, it's great to be here. Uh, today, the talk's on adductor muscle biomechanical properties in groin pain. Normally, when you come and stand here, you always thank the organizers for inviting uh, to speak. But uh, today, I'd like to just take a minute of my uh, 10 minutes to thank the organization. This time last year, we were still living in Holland. Although I'm from England, everybody thought I'm, uh, I was Dutch. And then we took the plunge uh, into Doha and moved out here. And it's been a brilliant year. And I'd just like to thank everybody from the Aspatar family for making me feel so welcome. And uh, today's a great day to be here uh, and have the conference, like the, the icing on the cake. So uh, anyway, just wanted to say that. And now uh, on with the talk. Biomechanical or viscoelastic properties of muscle. So we'll talk a little bit about butter, guitar strings, and muddy waters. Uh, what do I mean by this? It starts back in, uh, back in Holland. This is a Dutch sports medicine physician, Dr. Van der Sander, who does a lot of muscle manipulations for adductor-related groin pain. This is his daughter. She's laughing, not, uh, not screaming. Uh, and before he would treat the patient, he would always feel the muscle and remark how stiff and how high the muscle tone was. And then he would do his manipulations, and then he would finish and exclaim that your muscle is now soft like butter. And they would uh, give him the money and go home extremely happy. And this made me think uh, about whether or not it's true that there is an altered muscle biomechanical or viscoelastic property in, the, in those with adductor-related injuries. The problem was I didn't have anything to measure muscle tone or muscle stiffness with until I went to Finland to Juvescula, uh, where there's a doctor, Dr. Linen, who's a rehabilitation doctor who specialized in torticollis. And he put me onto this machine here, the Myoton. Uh, to get the Myoton, you have to go to Estonia and get trained uh, by a man called Eleko. And then you're the proud owner of a Myoton machine. And you come home with this, uh, this gadget, uh, the Myoton Myometer. What can you measure then? Uh, stiffness, muscle tension or tone, and elasticity. And I thought I was onto something really cool, and then you come to Aspatar and they've got one down in rehab. But uh, anyway, uh, before I tell you about the research, I'll just explain these three, uh, three properties, what they actually are. Muscle stiffness is the easiest to understand. If we go back, the machine has a little probe down here, and the probe pushes very softly into the muscle. <coughs> and the stiffness is simply, if this is the probe pushing into the muscle, what's the resistance felt by the probe? So how much stiffness do we feel when we press into the muscle? Then the probe releases, so it pushes down, and then it releases off up. And this allows us to measure the muscle tone or tension. And this is where the guitar strings come in. If we consider the top one to be perhaps a normal muscle tone, when we let go, the muscle will oscillate. If we imagine the muscle to have a higher tension or tone, it will oscillate more rapidly. And if we imagine the muscle to have a lower muscle tension or tone, it will oscillate more slowly. So we measure the muscle tone in hertz. And the third parameter was elasticity. So if we consider the top muscle, this muscle would be 100% elastic. Once we let go, it's going to continue oscillating forever. That would be if a tissue was 100% elastic. What actually we see is a waveform that looks like this. So the oscillations die down, dampen out, and then stop. And the speed at which that happens uh, between the first and the third peak, that's the elasticity. And if the muscle was completely inelastic, and it, that just happens. So the speed at which the oscillations die out, that's the elasticity. So armed with the myoton, we got Gijs, a Dutch medical student, to whom I'm very grateful for doing all the measurements. And from my practice in Holland, we recruited 25 athletes with long-standing adductor-related groin pain. Uh, it's been uh, told about earlier today how we define that. More than two months of pain pain on palpation of the origin, and pain on the resisted adduction test. We had 50 healthy athletes with no groin pain, and we did 
the measurements on the adductors with the myotome machine. What did we find? We found that in the healthy controls, there was a higher muscle tone in the dominant leg, but no difference in stiffness or elasticity, and the p-value just scraping in on the 0 0.05. Second result, we found that in a patient with unilateral adductor-related groin pain, and that was about 65% of them, that that leg was stiffer than the asymptomatic controls, but no difference in tone or elasticity. And again, P just coming in under 0 0.05 for that one. I think always when you do research like this, you have to be prepared for the curveball. You've got a new machine, you're going to have a look what you're going to find, and you get thrown some results that are tricky to explain. And that was this one. If we consider those patients with unilateral injuries, we didn't find any difference between their injured and their non-injured legs. And I didn't expect this one. I thought if we find a difference somewhere, it'll be in this one. And it wasn't. And the fourth one, and to this I'm grateful for Igor and Rob uh, from the first session to present to you some new data from them. In the prof footballers, they've been measuring. They've also been doing myoton measurements in the adductors and they've measured 44 professional footballers, and they find symmetry between the dominant and the non-dominant legs, so no differences there. So then we're left with the results, all four results. What can we say from the initial hypothesis that the tone and the stiffness uh, would be higher in those with adductor-related groin pain? The muscle stiffness was higher when compared to healthy controls for unilateral injuries, but no difference in the tone or the elasticity, uh, and no difference between legs in the injured subjects. So I think, yeah, to my mind, the hypothesis has not been clearly proven, and I struggle to explain the results we've got, so it's a bit, we're looking into muddy waters. Thank you all very much for your time.